Hello everyone and welcome back to my Colonization 2.5x series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we're going to do two shuttle missions, both to add modules to our Kerbin orbit station. Uh, so far we've, we've done a good job of adding modules to our Moon and Minmus stations. At least they, they, they look reasonably decent, but I feel like we need a little bit more heft on our Kerbin orbit station. So uh, let's get to it. I'll talk about it on the way up. Let's just run the shuttle script which I've tried to make improvements to. We have ignition and boosters. All right, launch is underway. So the two modules that we're uh, sending up this time are Nikolaev and Bikovsky, again named after cosmonauts. Uh, we're just uh, going with astronauts and cos cosmonauts for the module names. Nikolaev is an airlock module, Bikovsky is a KIS container module. The shuttle is the shuttle Lunacy, that's its little badge there. And uh, that's because Audacity and Kerbosity are both still undergoing repairs, though Kerbosity is going to uh, make its return coming up in the next launch. Our crew for this mission are Valentina as commander. Valentina was on KTS-1, the first shuttle mission. Malsby is the pilot, Dester is the engineer, and Isasen is the scientist. All three of them are rookies. I have added more food, water, and oxygen to the shuttle now, so they have about 14 days worth on board. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. Booster separation is not ideal right now, but it could be worse. So I'm gonna take it for now. I don't want to hang on to them longer because uh, they're just a drag on the whole stack. The, the, they're not producing enough thrust to justify their weight. On the other hand, they're producing enough thrust that they still go forward first instead of just dropping off to the side which is annoying. Alright, the shuttle is undergoing its roll. Everything seems normal. We should be on a good trajectory. I expect that we're going to end up in an orbit 125 by 100. That's basically what it's been going to during testing. We want 125 by 125, but that causes problems as far as disposing the external tank. So for now I'll take 125 by 100. At this point, the station is right behind us, so and we'll be going into a lower orbit at 125 by 100. So hopefully, it'll be just a bit ahead of us, and we'll be catching up. Okay, and shut down 100 by 25, and the external tank goes off, and now we're going to coast to 100 kilometers, and then boost our orbit to 125 by 100. Okay, the circularization burn is underway. Well, I say circularization, I mean the burn at Apoapsis is underway. It's not going to end up being circular, which is alright. We want a tangency, which means a portion of our orbit touching the target orbit on one side. Alright, we are approaching render range of the station. We are at 2.3 kilometers, as you see. And it's paused as it loads the thing. Alright, so target negative velocity, and uh, we're just waiting another minute. Well, we should probably get started a little bit earlier. The OMS engines aren't exactly the most powerful things. Let's open up the cargo bay, maybe get the fuel cells started. So these are our modules. This is Nikolaev, the airlock module, and Bikovsky, the the KIS container. So yeah, I added food, water, and oxygen containers up front here. And and in total, uh, this crew has 14 days, I believe. Well, 13 days. Fortunately, it seems like we can handle operations in daylight, so no problems with power, except if we really wanted to get the tugs into the cargo bay of the shuttle in order to dock with these, then they're going to have to retract their solar panels and then they only have 15 seconds, not 15 seconds, but 15 electric charge 
And I've added a little electric charge here so that once they do dock with the modules, there's not gotta be any worry. Okay, so we have to get Nikolaya first. So let's control from here. Let's. I guess we'll just have to have that pop out of the shuttle. So we'll have this sort of hover right above the cargo bay as we release it. But we have to make sure it's not moving towards the shuttle in some sort of dangerous way. So of that, decouple. And the shuttle has to maneuver away. Find control time. Oh, wow. That was serious magnetism. I didn't even have to rotate to match with it or anything. It just like came came right towards us at uh, one, one meter per second really fast. So, okay. I was not expecting that. I was expecting to have to rotate to match it and everything. All right, let's control from here. Maybe this is a good sign. So, uh, actually, I think uh, it's this docking, uh, common berthing mechanism right here that we have to go for. So let's do that. We can always turn it some other time, but maybe I'll turn it like this for now. I feel like uh, this should be at the bottom. Don't know why, but it's like there's no magnetism. Oh, no, there we go. All right, no problems. So where is it? There it is. All attached. Um, oh crud, that is not the right docking port. It's supposed to be on this side. Hold on, undock. No, no, no. Wrong one. We're in the dark now. We might want to wait until light before we try and grab the next module. Seems prudent. Oh, automatic connection. Wow, docking has been real easy this time. Okay, so yes, now it's on in the right place. Pretty sure. And and the next module, Bukowski, is going to go on this side. But let's wait until daylight before grabbing the next one. So that we have electric charge and everything. Well, as long as it's within a kilometer, I guess it's all right. Okay, uh, I'll just use the same tug. It's been good luck so far. I didn't even have to set this port active or anything. Whoa, so much for good luck. <laughs> hmm, it's got some issues. Maybe it's all right to stay out here. Let's, uh, let's just, no. No, no, off, off, shoot. That's gonna throw everything off. Dang it. Alright, whatever. Um, decouple node. Alright. Out it goes. Okay, let's see if it's gonna be as easy to dock with this as it was with the other module. Not sure. Oh, yep, no problems there. Okay, now we have to dock this to the other side, so let's control from here. And wow, the space station is two kilometers away. This is going to take a little bit of time. Alright, after a long journey of two kilometers, we are now 200 meters away from the station, and I need to figure out which side has the docking port that we want. Um, that looks like the module we just added. So let's um, sidestep a bit. We need to get on the opposite side of the station. So the next shuttle mission will bring up the beginning of our truss, our solar array truss, which will go here on this Clampatron construction port from USI. Okay. We have contact, and it was just straight, straight in. No problems with orientation. So the two modules we brought up are are now on and we've actually got some inventory we've got two of the connector ports and eight screwdrivers for now but we can get more inventory for instance i mentioned 
like removing RCS thrusters from here, we could just dump that into inventory and later have uh, Kerbal slap the RCS ports onto something else or bring them back down. How many parts is this? A 154 and it's a 59 ton station right now. So there we are and let's go back to the shuttle. Okay so the shuttle lunacy has done its thing and let's go orbit retrograde I don't think I started the fuel cell off, so let's do that. Start fuel cell. We don't want to run out of power when we're trying to come back down. And uh, close up the cargo bay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I did not expect it to start burning right now. That is highly incorrect. We're gonna end up landing short if it does this. This is a problem. Why did it ignite the engines immediately? Alright, I understand what the problem is. Okay, well, uh, it should still be okay. But it invalidates some of the testing I had done. Alright. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. Cruising right along. Since it started uh, retro burn earlier than I thought because of a little error in the script, uh, basically it's, uh, it's a complication between um, the negatives and positive longitudes, right? Because you go from negative 179 longitude to positive 179 longitude and that messes up calculations. You could use a modulus function, but I didn't and I forgot to account for that so it was doing a simple subtract, it was uh, trying a less than sort of situation. So anyway, but it's uh, pitching down to try and get more lift. It's at the bottom end of the pitch range. It goes from 35 to 45. I think I might have changed it to 48 to give it a little bit more leeway. But the point is it's trying to cover up, uh, cover the lost ground there from retro burning early. Okay, we're starting to get flame effects here. Nose a bit red and the home continent is in sight. Things are looking good. Checking the map. You can see our trajectory here. Uh, we are landing in the dark. Okay, I believe I can see the space center there. But we've got a long way to go yet. Don't want to hit any mountains along the way. Okay, looking good. 37 kilometers. We can definitely see the space center. If I took control now, I could probably glide there, but I want to let it do its thing. It's supposed to hand me control at 12 kilometers right now, that's why I set it to. It'll start pitching down at 30 kilometers. I don't know if I'll quite get it to the runway. It depends on the glideability of this thing, which has not been good. Has not been good. will be below the speed of sound by the time I take over. I'll dump, start by dumping the fuel. That'll help a little bit. Okay, KOS has handed control to me. I'm using the OMS engines to get rid of our remaining fuel. Okay, we no longer have any fuel. And we're sort of gliding, but this is much more brick-like than a regular shuttle, so it's a little bit tough. I don't know if I'm going to make it to the runway. Might be just short. I'll just try for the KSC grounds at least. I haven't changed the shuttle in any way. There were recommendations to increase the wing and do other things, maybe a canard. Canard would only be if we lacked pitch authority. We have plenty of pitch authority. It's not having trouble holding its nose up. It's just that we need more lift. But, um, you know, maybe we should just uh, try and use the script to get it closer and then go down without any other changes. Okay, pulling up. And hoping the ground meets me at a good place without any stalling. Oh no, hop. 
Uh, here we go again. Uh, oh, I hate hopping. Uh, ow, it did a thing. Oh, God. Ow. So close, really. Yeah, we, we, well, that, that side isn't opening right. Lost two engines and the body flap. I really need to just scale up these wheels. They look so dinky anyway. But I guess we'll call it an improvement. Obviously, the shuttle lunacy will have to undergo repairs, but the crew is safe. Let's recover vessel. Valentina got a ribbon for G-forces, and Malsby, Dester, and Isasen got uh, a normal array of ribbons for their first flights. Okay, let's get on with the next shuttle mission. And here we are with the second launch with the C0 truss. And I lied, it's not the Kerbosity shuttle, that one still needs more repairs. The Audacity shuttle is the one that is ready to go. The Kerbosity shuttle is in many pieces, so it'll, it'll take a little bit longer. All right, so I'm gonna throttle down and we'll just run the shuttle launch script as usual. Our commander for this mission is Nathaniel Kerman and Jeb is serving as the pilot here. Daftos Kerman is our engineer. Daftos was on KTS-2 and Bob Kerman is our scientist. He previously launched on KTS-1 so everybody here is a veteran. We are, you'll note, carrying some ore here. That's as ballast and that's because the truss is so big it fills the entire cargo bay and we had to remove the forward docking assembly and so to make sure that the balance is uh, as it is for the normal shuttle missions that we've been doing I put some ore containers in front as ballast. Okay, coming up one booster set and there they go again. Alright, we proceed all right, the shell is undergoing its roll procedure, and uh, well, we have a pretty close separation. The station is in front of us this time, as planned, and we will be catching up, so we'll use less fuel. Not that that was going to be a problem. The truss is fairly light, so we actually have plenty of fuel to spare. Not that the shuttle has a lot of internal fuel, mind you, it's got 515 meters per second and of course it uses some of that to complete its orbit. And the deorbit burn probably takes like 80, maybe maybe less than 80. Uh, we seem to be in a problematic situation as far as where it's ending up here. Well, the external tank is technically in the atmosphere at 74 kilometers. The atmosphere ends at uh, 84.7 kilometers in in uh, 2.5x scale, at least in here. I thought it was supposed to be 91, but it ends up being 84.7 somehow. Uh, so technically the external tank is still in the atmosphere, though barely. Not what I was hoping for, but still, uh, we are proceeding. We're encountering some drag here because we're still in the atmosphere, having finished that burn. Alright, we are about to finish our coast to apoapsis and then it will bring us into orbit. But we're not that far away from our target. The station is right there, 50 kilometers away, and says separation at closest approach is now 34 kilometers, so we timed it pretty well. We can probably... Uh, rendezvous very quickly now. Oh, it's overburning though. Uh, I'm gonna stop it. Uh, I want actually I want to see where it ends up. Okay, no, it's gone way too far now. Hmm, I wonder why it did that. Why? The last last time it worked fine. Same same script, same thing, but this time it overburned. Last time it was 125 by 100, this time 168, and it was probably going to continue. Strange. Anyway, we'll set that aside for now. Alright, we are getting really close to the station right now. And just one payload this time, right? The, it's just one big truss here. 
and uh, the tug can just grab it from this port here. I put a port here specifically so the tug could grab it, and it's going to dock to the station on the opposite side. Okay, I'm going to park it here. And then we'll send out a tug to grab the truss. Let's control from here. And go forward. Wait, I thought I said undock. Hmm. Oh! Hmm. There was some stickiness there. Okay, we need to actually get a little bit quicker. We're through with most of our electric charge already. Well... We had some magnetism, but maybe there's a rotation issue? Looks like it. Let me turn that off. Um, that seems to be worse. Uh, there we go. Alright. Okay, so it's all hooked up, but we'll wait until daylight before we pull it out. Control from here. Okay, it was a little bit caught at that end. I hope it's balanced. Should be. There's no reason for that side to be any different from this side. Let me control from here now, because we want to put that on the station. And let's find the station. There, uh, no, is it? Wow, that's pretty far away. It's a kilometer away. Here we go again. Now, there are no solar arrays on this truss. The arrays actually go on either end, so we won't have any solar power just yet. Well, of course, the station already has some solar panels. We have to handle the rotation, too. We certainly don't want this to attach to the station at any sort of angle. Hmm. Also, hopefully, we don't bump into anything. There's a lot of protruding bits, especially on the other tug. Oh, no, we've knocked something. Ah, great. All right, uh, we're backing off. Uh, let's try and back off in uh, more. Oh, shoot. Uh, like that. Okay, and stop, stop. Okay, we need to get these retracted. Okay, they retract the correct way, thankfully not in the direction that we would bang into something else. Alright, let's try this again. Still looks oriented about right. And it's connected. Okay, uh, one bump aside, pretty good. Let's turn that off and RCS off. Okay, so that's our the start of our main truss. And we're gonna have to watch out for that that tug there, probably move that. Well, we'll probably use that tug in particular to grab future sections just to get it out of the way. Alright, yep, so uh so far mission successful, three new parts added to the station. Let's try and bring the shuttle down again. Okay, the program is loaded in with a fix for what happened the previous time, but ironically the fix might throw us further off than what happened at the previous time, but it's unpredictable because it started a retro burn at a unpredictable time when it was not supposed to, so yeah. Well, we'll see how it does. And the retro burn will begin at 179 degrees east. Okay, shut down. We have our descent orbit 124 by 10. And what we're looking for is obviously that we land at the KSC, but also on the way there our pitch holds around 40 instead of constantly being at one end of the range or another, like uh, 35 or 48 or whatever. Closer to 40 would be better. Well, we begin with a uh, 35 degree pitch, so it's still thinking that it's too far away from the KSC right now as we start our way through the atmosphere.
we have flame effects and we are approaching the coast of the home continent at uh, 50 kilometers in altitude still reading that we're too far away from the KSC so it's still at 35 degree pitch technically we retro burned a little bit closer to the KSC this time we aren't even past the uh, mountains yet I think this is worse than last time also confusing considering we retro burned closer to the KSC this time than last time okay it is nosing down now perhaps I should have it do that a little bit earlier so it doesn't lose so much velocity but then that's assuming that we're too far away from the KSC when we could just adjust other things to make sure we're closer okay I have control now but yeah I'll dump the fuel so that we land as light as possible but we're further away this time I guess I get a little bit more landing practice. I'm gonna keep it at negative 20 degrees since I can't reach it. I think part of my problem last time was I was trying to reach the runway. This time I'm not going to try and reach the runway. Obviously. So we can just focus on landing as smoothly as possible. Okay, landing gear down. Our tiny, tiny landing gear. Oh, we still skipped. Um, oh, ow, still lost that thing. Great. Okay. Well, marginal improvement. Uh, and actually both sides of the brake flaps extended, but uh, we lost the body flap, but we got all the engines back. <laughs> Uh, well, still, here we are. Uh, Nathaniel, Jebediah, Daftos, and Bob are back on the surface of Kerbin with a uh, minor need for repairs to the Audacity shuttle. And we will continue from here. So next time we will uh, continue with more Amun and Mimus stuff. I just wanted to work on the shuttle a little bit and our Kerbin orbit station, but I think we've done enough for the time being. And we'll focus again on uh, the Moon and Mimus. So, alright. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time.